Hey guys, if you want to become a better archer, better bow hunter, you've came to the right place. I'm Levi Morgan, this is Bow Life Boot Camp, and we're about to dive into everything archery. All right guys, so I already have the knock into my arrow squared. So what I do on that is I'll turn the saw on uh, before I put the knock or the bushing or the wrap or anything and stick it in there and make sure it's square. Um, you can even cut a half an inch off the back end of the arrow, then square it however you want to do it. I already did that for the sake of time. Uh, so now I'm going to cut my arrows to length. I have my knock in. I've got it measured out exactly where I want it. Uh, and now I'm going to show you what I do. I'm actually going to cut the arrow off while the saw is still running. I'm going to stick it up here and square the point into the arrow off. Um, in this last chance arrow saw, it has a squaring tool while the saw is running. So I'm going to show you how that looks. Turn the saw on. Stick it in. Slowly swing the arrow in and turn. Make sure it's off. And I'm going to bring it here. Lightly press, even pressure. There, that's good. Then I'm gonna take right here, I just leave these in. Um, and I like to rough up the inside a little bit of that arrow, get make sure it gets it all off. Then I'll take, clean it. Then I'm gonna take actually a Q-tip and clean the inside even more to make sure I have a good bond with the glue. Now this is the same setup that I've used to win more tournaments probably in my career than any, this arrow setup. It's a gold tip X cutter. Uh, with 140 grain points. I'm running the uh, Tack Driver 275s. I'm gonna wrap these arrows with a really small wrap in case I decide to refletch them with something else later in the season. Uh, but I'm gonna go through and show you exactly how I build these arrows. Now I've already cut these arrows to length. I have squared the back end, which is the most important on an arrow. And I've also squared the front end with my last chance arrow saw. One thing I love about that saw is that it has a squaring tool built in. I don't have to manually square these arrows. Uh, then I want to make sure both ends are very clean. Um, you can cool melt your bushings in. You can uh, super glue them in like I do. Uh, but if you super glue them in, you might not ever get them back out without tearing the arrow up. Um, and I have used the GTO knock for, well, since it came out. I just feel like that little knock in competition very small, uh, very little contact with the string, uh, very little contact with the, the loop or the under knots um, to create pinch and all the things you don't want happening in your knock. And it also has really good fit to the string. While it's not too tight, uh, it keeps it really snug. I uh, really love the GTO knocks. So that being said, on the back end, you can see I have crested uh, the back end of the arrow. Now I've only crested this just barely enough to cover the length of the vein, maybe less than a quarter inch past where the vein's gonna go. Very critical when you're building arrows to know where the back of that vein needs to go. If you have to build a test arrow um, to do it, the main thing you wanna remember, you want zero contact from the veins to your face. If your vein is digging into your chin, hitting your beard, your mouth, whatever, that is a huge no-no when it comes to arrow building or tuning a bow, downrange accuracy, uh, because if you apply any slight bit different pressure to that arrow from one shot to the next, it changes your impact. One of the designs on this tack driver was for that. We took a really steep angle away from your face with the back of that vein, so you can actually move this vein further back on the arrow, but that vein is instantly trying to get out of the way of your face. That was one of the reasons we designed it that way. Also made it super quiet. This is my favorite all around vein right here. So once you know that, then you can measure to put your crest or you can just go from the straight back or if you're not gonna crest it, you just need to measure with your uh, fletching jig to make sure you're doing those the same and getting that away from your face. Now about the points. I like to put my points in before I fletch. Um, really doesn't matter. That's just a little weird thing that I do. So on my points, I'm using 100 grain X cutters right here. X cutter points from gold tip. Um, they're 100 grains, but they also are threaded on the inside so you can add weight to them. I know what I want my overall arrow weight to be. Um, and the reason I know that is because I've shot this same setup for years. 
Uh, one of the cool things now, ASA and IBO both have a speed limit that's consistent, and I can shoot the exact same setup for both organizations. So that's what I'm doing right here. Um, I feel like the X cutter is a great all around arrow because it's not tiny, so it's going to get me lines, but it also is pretty light and I can manipulate the weight however I want it to shoot fast, slow, however I want. Um, so what I did, I took a hundred grain blank weight and then gold tip makes different screw in weights too. I use a lot of the 20 grains. So all I, I do is I'll stack them. So I'll take two 20 grain weights and they screw into the back of each other. I'll drop a dab of glue in those threads, tighten that up, and then you just take, stick it on an Allen wrench. It's got an Allen wrench head too, as well as threads. So you can tighten it down. Then I'll take and screw that right into the back of my nib. Dab of glue on those threads too, because you don't want that rattling loose and your arrows falling out, because you know you can't ever get back in there to fix it. So that's what I did to make my my nibs weigh exactly 140 grains. I can make them 120s, 160s. They have 10 grain weights. They have 50 grain weights. So you can really fine tune what you want your arrow weight to be. So once I have that done, now it's time to fletch my arrow. So I'm going to take one of these. It's already got a nib on it. We're going to make sure you're good and clean. Um, I don't like using any kind of acetones or anything with the tack veins because it compromises the chemicals in the veins. All you need to do is take a paper towel or a clean rag and just wipe the dust and debris off your arrow um, or your, your wrap, whatever you're, you're fletching to. So I'm doing a three fletch here. I always like to orient it the same even though it really doesn't matter on this Vein Master Pro, then I'm going to take, connect that to keep a good grip. And always, this is a mistake I make still to this day, always make sure this thing is not between clicks because that's what keeps your veins exactly spaced apart uh, the same. So make sure it clicks so you'll hear it. Click. Let it sit there in that click. Then I'm going to take this, stick a vein in my Vein Master Pro. Now there's no marks on this. So I'll have to put one myself once I figure out exactly the spacing I want. So that's gonna be too close there. So what I'll do is I'll just move it. A lot of times there's a black side and a red side. So I'll move the bottom of my vein to that black, right at the edge of that black. Then I'll put it on here, really close to my arrow. And you can see that that's too far down. So what I'm gonna do is loosen the, the bolt on the bottom and slide this arrow up until I get exact even spacing on that wrap. Tighten that back down right there. And you can see that that's gonna clamp on with exact even spacing on my crest and give me the, the distance I need away from my face. Okay, so I always run a one or a two degree offset or helical, however you want to look at it. What's really cool about this Vein Master Pro <clears throat> is that in order to do that, all you have to do is move this pin. You can see an R for right and an L for left. So I just twist that off and you can take this pin, move it to a five degree left or a zero, you can do straight. So I'm going to do a two degree left. So I'm going to put that pin in the number two on the L side and then I'm going to turn that down until it snugs up against that pin. That's giving me a two degree left helical. I run left because on all my bows, my bows throw them naturally to the left. It's called clocking an arrow. When your arrow comes out, it naturally throws it one way or the other. Almost all the bows I've ever had have turned left. I think it has to do with how the string is twisted, but it's very important to keep that arrow going in the rotation that it naturally starts off the bow. If not, it'll start one way. Say your, your bow throws an arrow naturally left and you have a right helical. Well, it'll come off the bow going left, and at some point down range, it'll have to stop and be knuckleballing while it's turning back before it starts steering the other way again. Very important to keep it going with the natural rotation. So test that. Take a Sharpie uh, before you fletch an arrow, like right here. I could take this arrow, put a mark on the top, right where the throat of my knock is, snap it on, shoot a target two or three yards away, then look and see which way that knock or that mark is. If the mark is on the left, that means your arrow's starting to spin left. If it's on the right, it means it's starting to spin right. Now do this right out of the bow so you don't get a full rotation. 
and you're not sure. So you can shoot it right out of the bow and start going back and see, make sure you know which way that arrow is starting to spin. Once you know that, you can decide what helical to put on. I'm only shooting out to 50 yards. I could get away with a three degree if I wanted to, but when you do that, and I shoot a blade rest. I'm shooting the new QAD blade rest. It's not a drop away. I'm not a big fan of drop ways for tournaments. Um, the more helical you put on, the more problems you're going to have with clearance on a blade rest. So I think a two degree is perfect for, especially with an arrow this big, uh, an X cutter. You go to a triple X, you could get away with a little more. But the smaller diameter your arrow is, the less helical you can get away with on a blade rest without having contact. So just remember that. Um, and also, I'm only shooting 50 yards uh, in these competitions. Uh, 54 it would be like a long shot. So, you know, helical is not going to give me any trouble, like parachuting effects like it would at 100 yards. So, a two degree is kind of a perfect number. <coughs> so, now I'm going to take and press this on, and I want to make sure that I have an even fit throughout. And one cool thing about this clamp is. These little knobs right here turn so you can get, so it's not pressing harder on one side of the vein or one end of the vein than it is the other. So before you put glue on or primer, I want to look and make sure that I'm getting a perfect fit and it's not hitting one side before the other, anything like that. And it actually looks great. I think I already had this one set from the last dozen I fletched. Once you do that, I'm going to take my primer pin, shake it up. I want to make sure I'm going to do it on my pants. Sorry, Samantha. That primer's coming out. And it's coming out. So you don't want to press too hard. If you get too much primer and it gets all over the vein, it'll actually cause the vein to crinkle up. So once you do that, you don't press again. You just take and swipe it up and down the vein, just like that. And I'll give it about, you know, no more than 30 seconds to a minute before I'm going to put glue on this vein and fletch it. So you don't want to wait overnight. The primer loses its, its effect to help the glue bond to the vein. Then I'm just going to take and run a thin bead of glue right down the middle like that. Take and spread that glue out. Make sure that the whole base is covered. Not too much. I don't want a bunch of runny mess going all over my arrow. I just want to make sure that I've got a good even layer of glue. There's no air pockets. Um, stuff like that. So once I have that, I take it, don't wait, and hold, I'll hold two fingers here just for leverage, and then I'll press and hold for five to ten seconds. Probably don't have to hold that long, I just like to make sure. Um, and then what I'll do is while it's still in the clamp, after about ten seconds, I'm going to stop take a q-tip and I'm going to run it right here and make sure I've got a good even kind of clean up of this glue on this side of the vein. I'm kind of meticulous about my stuff. I like it to be perfect. A little excess glue is probably not going to hurt anything. I just like for it to look good. That's all. So then take the clamp off. The vein is stuck. Rotate it till it clicks. Click. Just like that. I'll take that, clean up the other side of the the vein real quick. Any excess glue. It's a really clean, sharp looking fletch job right there on that particular vein. Now we just gotta do that a hundred more times and we'll be good. So go right to the bottom of the black with my next arrow or my next vein right here. Right to where just exactly. Now one thing about these tag veins, they are exact. Veins in the past you would get eighth inch, sometimes a quarter inch difference in length, weight, so you didn't really pay, it didn't pay you to be very exact with your placement, you know, even though I always did. But with these tack veins, they are almost exact from one vein to the next, one color to the next, so you can be as accurate and as exact as you want to be uh, with the placement of these veins. And I normally don't have to press my primer pin back down again for probably three to four arrows. Um, but you always want to make sure, it's good to have a paper towel, just make sure the primer's coming out and it, it, you know, it gets wet on the paper towel for a second. Then run my bead of glue and just do this over and over and I'll have an arrow done shortly. Alright guys, it's glue, it's primed, glued, 
We're sticking the last vein on, same thing. Then we're going to take a look and see how this, this looks. Hold it for 5 to 10 seconds. I would suggest 10 just to make sure. Um, I didn't count, but I'm guessing that's get, we're getting close. So then I'll take a Q-tip, clean it once again, take the clamp off, spin it up, clean off this side. That's beautiful. All right, let's take this thing out and see what it looks like. All right. You can see, if you look straight down that arrow, the helical on it, two degree offset. Our spacing is absolutely perfect. Um, really nice. I don't have any access glue all over the place. Um, that's, a, that's a world champion arrow right there, I'm telling you. This, this arrow setup, weight, um, has won more tournaments for me than any other arrow. I just think it's probably the best all-around competition arrow in the world. If I could only have one, this is the one I would shoot. Um, it's going to be really bright, give me feedback instantly. Um, I can't wait to go out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build the rest of these arrows and uh, get ready for some up upcoming competitions. But that's how I build arrows, um, really hitting the high spots there. But if you take all these steps and you do them, your arrow build is going to come out way more consistent, way better. Remember all the, all the steps, don't skip any, and uh, you could build an awesome set of arrows yourself.